Crisis Prevention and Intervention, Emergency Preparedness for Healthcare Facilities 1.0 Introduction This chapter would discuss the emergency preparedness that hospital communities should observe during a certain suspected occurrence of a disaster. First, it is pertinent to note that disaster usually comes in all sizes and shapes, it can be either artificially created or natural. Suspected calamities are, the earthquake, landslide, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, terrorism, volcanoes, tsunami, weapon attack and lastly carbon monoxide poisoning. It is advisable that since a hospital comprises of teamwork, the fight and preparedness here should also be initiated as a team. Outside the hospital workers and patients, when people are anticipating an outbreak of any kind of disaster that may range from an earthquake, a disease, terrorism, and or fire, hospitals are always on a high alert in view of intervention. This is necessary because if any of these outbreaks eventually occurs, those who become victims always require medical attention, route and route, 2002. Thus, putting in place a substantial medical system for attending any emergencies is congruent at such times. 2.0 Earthquake, it is vital to raise concern over earthquake occurrence in the hospital. Earthquake is natural and often hard to identify the direction to which it is originating from without some machinery assistance. It is advisable for the hospital management to be well equipped with several kits that can last over 72 hours after the occurrence of the real incidents. Some of the kits are the ponchos, radios for communication and networking, food rations and flashlights just to sample but a few. It is also important for the hospital management to acknowledge the vitality of the emergency systems that will aid in notifications. Further, it is of awesome importance for the hospital to be safeguarded with earthquake safety measures. Frames and foundations of the building should be reinforced to resist earthquake. Whenever there is an earthquake, people should always drop, cover, and hold on. In real terms, this means that one should first look for a place to drop and cover him or herself when the earth starts trembling. This in effect reduces the chances of any person falling casualty of such natural disasters. However, noting that the occurrence of such natural disasters requires that the inception of certain measures is substantial, v. Nema, 2007. This means that if a certain area requires helping people survive an earthquake and thereafter reduce its health impacts, they must first of all prepare, come up with a plan, and practice. 3.0 Fire What starts as a simple spark can result to an uncontrollable fire in less than 30 seconds. Fire spreads very easily and requires just a few seconds to become risky and uncontrollable. Nevertheless, emergency preparedness for fire with regard to hospital professionals is always significant, Riley and Markinson, 2011. It comes to such a situation when hospitals professionals seek to bring together the necessary equipment that can help reduce the consequences of a fire outbreak. Under these circumstances, the level of readiness is very important as it helps determine the extent at which the hospital professionals will react to a fire outbreak. In an event of fire, healthcare providers should have been prepared on the correct way to evacuate patients as the fire department tries to extinguish the fire. 4.0 Terrorism Some disasters may be natural while others are man-made. Terrorism is an example of a man-made disaster that may cause people loss of their lives and in other cases, loss, or destruction of their properties, CIO Tone, 2006. In whichever case, terrorism does not result into anything productive but rather diminishes any feeling of freedom and security within and outside the said territory. Take a look at the September 9-11 terrorist attacks, it is notable that both the American citizens and the outside world felt threatened security-wise, v. Nima, 2007. As a result, the government, with the support of other concerned organizations resolved to form such groups like the local emergency planning committees, which supports hospital professionals in combating terrorist attacks. One way in which the hospital prepares for terrorist attacks is to be on the alert with heightened security system. Unlike before, people can no longer walk into the hospitals freely, everybody needs to be scanned for weapons, etc. Exits should be properly labeled for easy exit. In addition, the alarm system should be in place and in good condition, which will help in getting outside help immediately. At times, terrorist activities may include holding innocent victims hostage, shooting and wounding individuals, and or releasing hazardous gases into an enclosed building. Under these circumstances, the lives of many people are always at stake, a situation that calls for emergency preparedness in not only hospitals but also in security agencies, Rosdahl and Kowalski, 2008. In recent times, Terrorist and other related criminal activities have skyrocketed and the available means of combating their consequences are being diversified. 
Hospital professionals equip themselves with emergency handling facilities such as masks and gloves if they are up against hazardous gases. 5.0 Carbon Monoxide Poisoning Carbon monoxide is simply a gas that is colorless and odorless but very poisonous when it reaches its maximum and can lead to a sudden death due to the body's lack of oxygen. Carbon monoxide which emanates from motor vehicles, gas-powered generators, fire, power washers, boats, charcoal grill, and other gas-powered equipment can cause death when insufficient supply within the ambient air CIO tone, 2006. The most at-risk populations consist of the elderly, babies, infants, and people who suffer from chronic respiratory illnesses, anemia, and or heart diseases Landisman, 2005. In an event of carbon monoxide poisoning, hospital professionals should equip themselves with oxygen gas and resolve to consider carrying out hyperbaric oxygen therapy HBO. Oxygen administration is a substantial remedy against carbon monoxide poisoning mainly because it relieves the patient of hypoxemia as it helps supply the heart with adequate oxygen capable of pumping blood to the other parts of the body, Venema, 2007. Healthcare providers should also show emergency preparedness in an event when a patient is brought in with carbon monoxide level above or between 25 and 30 percent. In such circumstances, a patient may lose his or her life to cardiac complications, neurological impairment, and or prolonged unconsciousness, Hogan and Burstein, 2007. Generally, when healthcare professionals carry out a hyperbaric oxygen therapy and diagnose a patient with severe acidosis, cardiac disease, or transient unconsciousness, they should always consider the situation as an emergency as the patient could die if immediate intervention is not proffered, Clements, 2009. 6.0 Hurricane, a cyclone or a typhoon or other tropical storms could occur. Hospitals and healthcare professionals should at all times consider a hurricane to be a disaster that requires emergency attention and prepare for them majorly because they lead to the destruction of homes, industrial outlets, and social supplies such as water, electricity, and food, Rosedahl and Kowalski, 2008. A hurricane is another disaster that needs thorough preparedness. For any hospitals to run effectively without worries of the severity of the hurricane, it is important that backup generators are put in place to prevent blackout condition. In the event of a hurricane, strong winds blow. They tend to destroy power lines causing a total blackout, which leads to people living in particular area being cut off from the outside world, as they cannot watch the news or receive any supplies. There could also be loss of lives as a hurricane destroys buildings, trapping those inside and making it hard for them to survive without the daily supplies. With this respect, considering a hurricane to be a natural disaster that requires emergent attention is crucial for healthcare professionals as it can help save lives of the affected by providing them with the necessary medical attention capable of sustaining their lives, Landisman, 2005. Hurricanes can trap patients and medical professionals in the facility without the ability of getting out, and that is if they are alive. 7.0 Floods, another natural disaster is the flood. It is worthy to note that floods being a natural disaster calls for preparedness immediately when any sign is noted to avoid loss of life. Some of the preparedness process include, emergency teams being available so that they assist with evacuation. Plans are supposed to be in place for the relocation of the patients in the intensive care unit, those on hemodialysis and those who are in ventilators. Safe routes should be improvised so that patients and other individuals can run to a nearby shelter, for instance a raised poop house. Emergency kits should be accessible. The emergency kits must have, the torch, portable radio and spare battery. Fresh water stocks, candle, dry food and matchboxes. Have grocery, polythene, bags, waterproof that can hold valuables and clothing bamboo stick and umbrellas. Lastly, the first aid kit should have strong ropes that will assist in tying and manuals. In relation to the community, healthcare professionals should prepare for floods. Floods cause diseases, infections, and other malicious ailments that cause deaths and loss of properties, Rosedahl and Kowalski, 2008. Buildings collapse and structured centers fall apart when floods occur. Healthcare providers should prepare in case of a flood since they result in diseases such as cholera and infections such as typhoid. In tropical regions, floods cause other diseases like malaria since mosquitoes breed in such zones making it hard for the residents to survive in such conditions, Venema, 2007. 8.0 Tornadoes, a tornado is another disaster that needs a hospital to be well prepared in any case it occurs. Since it is a violent wind, called whirlwinds and it usually crosses the land in a narrow path, it can cause death and so it needs correct measures to be put in place. 
Here, the required preparedness is as follows, the vulnerable parties like patients should be protected by every practical and feasible means available. Some of this practice are blinding and closing the windows. Patients should be covered with blankets and nursing personnel are supposed to move patients to the hallways. All individuals should move to the interior, the hospital management should make the security available. Any individual at the site that does not have security officers, should be designated as a spotter. When people become aware of a possible occurrence of a tornado and immediately seek ways of evading it, the damage caused by such natural disasters can be greatly reduced. Adhering to tornado warnings and implications can help save many lives as the said emergency evacuation and combating policies are always the best remedy for these disasters, Wolfson, Hendy, and Harwood Nuss, 2010. An ongoing tornado poses serious challenges and risks to people's lives as they carry with them heavily blown objects and risk killing people through falling or flying objects as the winds are always fast and strong. After a tornado, those wreckages that remain behind present additional risks to people's lives as they can result in risky injuries. Nothing can be done in order to prevent the occurrence of a tornado but taking the necessary actions that can help combat the risks that a tornado poses is essential, Rosdahl and Kowalski, 2008. Just as in the case of other natural disasters, tornadoes break power lines, electrical systems, and gas lines and can cause huge explosions or electrocution. Healthcare professionals should prepare for tornado occurrences since the challenges it poses are great in depth. Systemically, a wave of a tornado can leave hundreds of people dead and properties worth millions of dollars destroyed. The rescue attempts of the tornado that took place in Marion, Illinois indicated that 50% of all the recorded injuries occurred during the rescue. People who walk among the debris may also sustain serious injuries as well as those entering damaged buildings, Trufanov, Rosso de Vida, and Guidotti, 2010. When such a disaster occurs, people suffer many complications that require medical attention and therefore healthcare professionals should consider a tornado an emergency issue and resonate to set up an emergency preparedness platform, Riley and Markinson, 2011. Medical buildings should be tornado-proof. 9.0 Tsunami a tsunami is a long high sea wave caused by an earthquake, submarine landslide, or other disturbances. When a tsunami takes place, it is likely that many people will either suffer from multiple health issues or lose their lives in the process. Hospitals should carry out the pre-event preparedness, triage and patient evacuation. It is pertinent to carry out recognition of the hospital and secondary transfer, discharge where necessary and reduction of the admission procedures. It is pertinent for the hospital management to reinforce the medical system to be well trusted. There is a clear indication that healthcare professionals should always be in preparation for a tsunami event since their expertise is crucial and can help reduce damage and save many lives, Wolfson, Hendy, and Harwood Nuss, 2010. Without a doubt, tsunamis lead to loss of shelter hence exposing the survivors to insects and heat among many other environmental risks, Rosdahl and Kowalski, 2008. Majority of the deaths that occur during and after a tsunami are caused by many hazards such as drowning. Injuries result from people being thrown by water into debris, which include but not limited to houses, stationary items, and trees, Clements, 2009. During these moments, people may sustain injuries such as head injuries and broken limbs that commonly result from physical impacts when water washes the caught victims into debris. 10.0 Volcanoes, a volcano is a rupture in the crust of a planetary mass object, such as earth, that allows hot lava, volcanic ash, and gases to escape from a magma chamber below the surface. Earth's volcanoes occur because its crust is broken into 17 major, urgent tectonic plates that float on a hotter, softer layer in its mantle. Volcanoes can end up producing flash floods, toxic gases, ash, and fast-moving flows of things like hot gases and other substances termed by geologists as pyroclastic flows, Rosdahl and Kowalski, 2008. A volcano eruption can also result to emission of hot water flash floods and some debris otherwise referred to as lahars. The emergency plan should include the following. Hazardous zones should be identified and marked valuable property should be in register safe refuge zones should be identified so that hospital population can be evacuated if there are dangerous eruptions. Evacuations routes should be identified, assembly point be marked, this will help those who are waiting for transportation to the next safe hospital to converge easily. Means of transport should be identified, presence of the alert procedures, still during evacuation, it is vital for healthcare personnel to improvise mobile treatment. Correct communications should be put in place. It is vital to establish a good system for updates.
11.0 Landslides Landslides and or mudslides occur when masses of earth parts, rocks, or debris fall down a slope making the neighboring parts sink together with the affected place. Mudslides otherwise termed as debris flows are the most rampant types of fast-moving landslides and tend to flow in specific channels, Clements, 2009. A landslide occurs when there is a disturbance within the natural stability of a given slope. Unlike man-made disasters, landslides can come along with earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, heavy droughts, and or rains, Wolfson, Hendy, and Harwood Nuss, 2010. Since landslides result from other formations such as when water develops or accumulates rapidly on a ground causing a surge in water saturation on a rock, debris, or earth, it leads to an outbreak of diseases. Rosdahl and Kowalski, 2008. Landslides are so dangerous as even a hospital could be covered up in a landslide. If the hospital facility is not affected, it is the responsibility of the healthcare providers to give optimum assistance and intervention to the victims that has been brought to the hospital by the rescue teams. 12.0 Conclusion It is important for hospitals to revise their plans on how to cover additional types of disasters that have in one way or another been ignored. Here, a fact to put into consideration is to check if institutions are on the right track in their arrangement for the emergency preparedness. Further, it is pertinent for the hospital management to involve all the departments. By doing that, it will be possible to institute an effective team and collaboration process. Another notable point is that, individuals should engage in not only practice but also training so that disaster management communication between the hospital and the community is effective. Hence, everyone will have open minds and that when disaster strikes, they will be well prepared and will face it courageously and positively.